How's it going? I just want to take a few minutes to talk about the BH Onofre. Some of you may have seen me show this off on one of the live streams. It's a new dual relay board from Portugal. The BH stands for Bruno Orta. This is Bruno. Love the hair. Is he upside down? It's based on an ESP8266. It has two 2 amp relays, power supply, so you can put AC power in and switch two circuits. It makes all the other GPIO pins available to you here, and the firmware that it comes with will let you add extra things like a PIR sensor, a light sensor, and one of two different kinds of temperature sensors, either the Dallas temperature sensor or the DHT sensor. The stock firmware works with MQTT, so you don't have to flash it or change the firmware at all. But they do make it pretty easy if you did want to change the firmware to Tasmoda or ESP Home or whatever else you like. They've got a website where you can order assembled boards for 15 or 15 and a half euros, or you could also just order the PCB and build it yourself. I've got a room in my house that has two switches waiting for something just like this. So here goes. When you first turn it on, it creates an access point called BH on Ofree with the password EasyIoT at. When you've connected to it, point your browser to this IP address. That'll bring up the web interface where you can put in your Wi-Fi SSID and password. Anytime you make a change, click Guardar. That means save. On the MQTT tab, you can put in the IP address, user, and password for your MQTT broker. On the Dispositivos page, you can see the two relays and the two switches, and you can add new sensors like the motion sensor that I'll be using. I'm turning off Auto Discovery and then Saving, and you have to save after each change that you make. For the type of switches, you have a few different options. Normal is what you would use for a latching switch. I'm using a momentary switch, so I'm setting mine to push button. Now back to the hardware. So here's my BH Onofre, all connected to two switches, those uh, capacitive touch switches, and a PIR sensor. It's powered up right now, so I'll be very careful. Thank you for your concern. If I touch this, it changes the state right here. And if I change it here, you hear it click over there. Down here is where we see the PIR sensor. And this is the topic. And the only way to see it is by subscribing to that topic. So we can do that, but I know it works. <laughs> so instead of going through the testing, well, it's fine. Let's test it. <laughs> We're going to use MQTT lens. If you've never used MQTT Lens before, the way it works is you go in here, you add a new connection, give it a name, put in your IP address of your MQTT broker, which is probably going to be your Home Assistant PC or whatever you're using, and then your username and password that you use for MQTT, if you use one, hopefully you do, and then save it. And then out here it will connect. And so when it's green here, that means it's connected. If I press that, then it's not connected anymore. Press that, now it's connected. So to subscribe to this topic, I'm gonna to copy it, and paste it in the subscribe box, and then hit subscribe. Now down here, it's gonna show me any new messages it gets. So when I activate it, there you go. There's another, oh, it goes back to off. And that's an auto back to off. I didn't have to set that up. There it is again, okay? So now I know it's working, yay! And the topics for the switches are up here. This is the state topic and this is the control topic. So I can copy both of those and use them when I set up my switches in El Home Assistente. <laughs> so let's set up some new switches. Two new switches. I'm going to just copy most of this. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. There is an auto discovery option. In fact, I want to make sure I have it turned off. To use the touch button, the way I have it, I needed to set the mode. I don't know why the type matters, but I set it to light. The PIR sensor is on GPIO 14, and I've got it set as a movement sensor. It's active, so that's all good. Those are the settings that I have to make this thing work. What else do I need to tell you over here? So Wi-Fi settings go in here. This is the password, uh, MQTT broker information you put in here. 
If there's a firmware update, you can. If you were gonna swap the firmware out for something else, you would do it right here by choosing a different binary file. None of those are binary files. But if they were, you could upload them there. If you uploaded one of those, I don't think anything would happen. At least nothing good. I can change the name of it because if I change the name here, it's gonna change it in the topic. This is going in our mudroom. Save that. Now I'm betting when I go here, it now says mudroom in the topic. See that? And I'm sure it says it down here too. Yep, right there. That was easy. Oh, auto discover sim. I think sim means yes. Sim. Yeah, I thought so. So I'm gonna set this to no. I just have had trouble when once you auto discover things, then they're a pain to get rid of if you wanna get rid of them. Now we'll go back here and we'll set up our new switches. So the new switch, we're gonna make this uh, first one. So we're gonna make this the mudroom, mudroom fan. And for the command topic, I'm gonna grab this, paste that command topic right there. And the state topic, copy that over. And there's the state topic. Excellent. Nothing else changes here, payload on and off. That's switch number one. So let's just do it again. Copy all that. Paste it there. Now this is gonna be the mudroom light. And then really, looks like the only differences are instead of a one here and one there, there's a two there and a two there. Instead of a one there and a one there, there's a two there and a two there. So let's just switch that. Change that to a two and two and two and two. Very nice, very nice. Next is the motion sensor. So we're gonna to go to binary sensor section and right here, we're gonna use one of these. So this is an MQTT PIR sensor that I have hooked up to a different device. This is on a Sonoff T1 here in my office. So that's a good example. And so we'll call this Mudroom Motion. Ooh, doo, doo, doo. So original, it's fine. It's just, it's amazing. How do I do it? I don't know. Grab that, copy, paste it right there. And then I don't need this off delay. Off delay is cool because if you have a motion sensor, like a lot of them, that don't send a second code to turn it back off, you use off delay and it turns back off after that many seconds. Otherwise, it'll just stay in the on state as far as home assistant's concerned. That's what off delay is useful for. This particular device uh, must have something like that built in because you can see back in MQTT lens, if we subscribe to that topic, there it detects motion and then I'm not gonna move and it sends an off signal a couple seconds later. So we don't need the off delay. And that should be it. Save that. Just a couple things left to do to finish off the mudroom new BH Ono Free light switch. We needed to do something with the user interface. So I made a quick entity card with just those two. I don't worry about the fan as much. And then, the most important thing, the whole reason that I'm doing this in that mudroom is because I walk past there all the time and turn the light off. That's not supposed to happen in a smart home. So here's a couple of quick automations. This first one says anytime the motion sensor goes to on, it'll turn on the mudroom light. The second one is the most important one. And it says anytime that the motion sensor is off for three minutes, then we're gonna turn off the mudroom light. Somebody asked me about this ID and what it is, why it's there, where it comes from. If you use the automations editor in Home Assistant, it will assign an ID. If you edit directly your automations.yaml file, you don't need this, but if you put an ID in here, then this automation will show up in the automations editor. Let me show you. There you go. If I don't put that ID number in there, it won't show up here. So hopefully with this, I won't have to turn off this light very often anymore. Well, that's it. A quick rundown of the BH Onofri. There's a lot to like about it. It compares favorably with the Shelly 2. The price is a little less, but the Shelly 2 is now UL listed. So that's worth a little extra money right there. When I first showed the BH Onofri on one of my live streams, 
some of the criticism that came up right away was that there needed to be a separation between the mains voltage connections. Looking at their GitHub page, Bruno and the gang have made an update and added a slot between the line and the neutral. So that should fix that problem. Another one of the great things about the BH Onofri is that you can build it yourself. They give you everything that you need on their GitHub page, including the files that you need to print your own PCBs. I haven't ordered very many custom PCBs in a while, but I know Bruno has used PCBWay for his BH Onofris, and I also saw that Quindor's used them for his LED dimmer boards. So if you're looking for a custom board for one of these devices or something like the HA switch plate or whatever else you can think of, check out PCBWay. Uploading your PCB file and ordering is pretty simple. They're always running some kind of specials, so you know you'll get a good deal. They'll ship them to you pretty fast, but most importantly, they're great quality. So if you need some custom PCBs, check them out. If you like this video and you want to see more, I've got a bunch. And I'm making new ones as often as I can. In addition to videos like this, I do live streams at least once a week on Sunday and sometimes during the week whenever I can squeeze it in. If you want to chat with me or with others who also enjoy these kinds of projects, check us out on Facebook and Discord. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.